Welcome to Lighting Talks. I'm super excited to be here today and talk to you about how to welcome your users to your Android app when they get a new phone. So why is this important? So if you think about the Android ecosystem, it runs on phones, right? And we all get a new phone every two, maybe three years. And when we do this, we reinstall all of the apps we've installed. And we do this, and all of our users of our apps do this as well. You do a little bit of math, you figure out if you buy a new phone every two years, that means half of your users are going to get a new phone this year. And if you you know, don't do anything at all with your application. You're going to give them a cold welcome when they come back. And you're going to show them an email and a password form that's going to be like they've never used your app before. You're completely disrupting their flow of using your app. What you want to do instead is offer them a warm welcome. You want to welcome them back to your application and create this continuous user experience that jumps from their old device to their new device. So you don't have any friction, you don't have any retention problems for these users that are switching devices and using your application. There's a couple products you can use from Google that help you do this. So one of them is Google Sign-In. I think uh, everyone knows what Google Sign-In is, right? It's a button you press and you log in. All right, so it's a button you press and you log in. It's amazing for this flow exactly because it's very simple to do that login. So it's good for your activation originally because it's easy to log into your app. But when they get a new phone, it's also good for reactivating these users because all they do have to is have to click a button. And on Android, you can even configure it so they don't even have to click the button on the new device. They'll automatically log in. Google Sign-In works on iOS, Android, as well as the web. So you can use it everywhere, and it's a great way to add federated login to your application. Another feature you can use on Android is Smart Lock for passwords. So Smart Lock is, well, it's a password manager. It's named quite well. Uh, so it stores usernames and passwords, or even federated credentials, up in the cloud when the user confirms that they would like to save the password after they log in. So they're going to do this on their old phone. They're going to save their password. And then when they get onto their new device, when they first come into your application, you're going to give them this warm welcome. You're going to say, I know who you are. I, do you want to log in with that account you've already saved for this application? And it's just going to create that seamless experience and log that user into your application. Uh, so one of our, our partners, Netflix, who I believe is here today, actually. Uh, so Netflix used this, and they found that they had 20% fewer support requests. And so if you think about that, you know, maybe every time a user contacts you to you know, get a username and password fixed, there's probably five users that didn't. And they're just not going to come back to your application for months or even years at a time. They might just you know, become a retention problem. They may never come back. So this is a fantastic way to improve your business metrics. And then autofill is a new feature we launched in Android O. It works kind of like SmartLock when it comes to usernames and passwords. So it's an autofill system, right? So it autofills text views exactly the way you'd think. And one of the most common text views to get autofilled is usernames and passwords. So the way this works is after they log into your application on their old device, they'll choose to save it to the autofill uh, service. And that's going to go up to the same data store as SmartLock. It's a secure data store for passwords. And then when they come back on their new device, it's just going to go ahead and autofill. So there's a couple things you can do to get your application ready for autofill. One of the biggest ones is set up a digital asset link that links your web and your Android app. So this is great because autofill has pluggable password managers, but all of the password managers support this. And when they do that, what happens is the user can log in on the web. And if they're using the same password manager on their Android device, they're going to go ahead and get those credentials transferred. So they log in on the web, install your Android app, and the password's already saved. They get the seamless upgrade experience to your Android application. Another thing you have to do for autofill, uh, well, you don't have to do it, but if you want the best experience for users, you should set up autofill hints. So you should tell the autofill service what the username, what the password field is. That way, the autofill service doesn't have to guess based on your IDs and maybe get it wrong, which is you know, probably the worst experience you can give your users. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is auto backup. I'm going to hand it over to Jeremy. Yeah, so auto backup is a great way to um, also provide continuity um, to your users. Um, so even if your app um, syncs to the cloud, uh, there's still usually device-specific settings um, that you can back up. And there's also you know, no user who's been using your app for a year wants to see a tutorial uh, first thing when they launch your app when they're on a new phone. Um, so auto backup works by when the phone's idle, we back up to the cloud. Um, your data is stored securely. Um, you can have up to 25 megs. Um, but if you go over that, backups will fail. Um, on the new phone, when the user installs uh, the app, it will restore the data um, before the app runs for the first time. And the user picks up where they left off um, without any friction or churn. Um, you can also include and exclude specific files. Um, so for example, you can exclude OAuth tokens or other things that shouldn't be backed up. 
Um, and with all these tools, it's possible to provide continuity to users and keep them engaged when they switch phones. Um, we'll be back in the back. <laughs>